Morning, everybody. How are we doing today? Y'all want to stand to your feet with us? Every fear I lay at your feet, I'm 
worship you. I worship you. You are here working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. Who 
Lord Jesus, we thank you for being with us. Thank you that you are our way maker, our healer, our provider, our comforter. Jesus, we don't have words to describe who you are to us. We thank you. Thousand generations falling down in worship to sing a song forever. Try that again. A thousand generations falling down in worship to sing a song of ages to the land. And all who've gone before us and all who will believe will sing a song of ages to the land. Sing your name. Your name is the highest. Your name is the greatest. Your name stands above them all. And all thrones and dominions, all powers and positions, your name stands above them all. And the angels cry. Holy, our creation cries. Holy, you are lifted high. Holy, holy forever. And if you've been forgiven. If you've been redeemed, sing a song forever to the land. If you walk in freedom, and if you bear his name, sing a song forever to the land. Sing a song forever and amen.
and delighted that you are here. I pray everyone had an amazing week with their families uh, through Thanksgiving. And I pray that those who are still traveling are getting back to us safely. And so we're so happy to have you here this morning. We just have a few announcements. If you're new to us, um, we have a few ways that you guys can connect with us. Um, there is, well, okay, just kidding. Uh, let's talk about giving first. So we have our little uh, QR code that you can um, scan that allows you to give online. You can also give here in person as well. Um, and then on uh, December the 4th at 6 p.m., we are doing uh, Bethlehem Revisited. Um, and so we would love for you guys to join us in that as well. It is pretty awesome. Um, also today, um, our kids will be going with Miss Candace uh, during worship. So if you have kiddos, you're going to join Miss Candace. And so again, we are so thankful that you guys are here with us today. Uh, if you'll join me in prayer this morning. Dear God, thank you so much for um, this lovely morning, this beautiful weather that you've bestowed upon us, God. I just thank you, um, first of all, for you coming and sending your son, Jesus Christ, to die for us, God. We're so thankful for that. I'm personally thankful for my salvation and my trust that I know that I know where I'm going one day. And God, I thank you for all of those who um, are here this morning, God, that I hope and pray that they will just get something from our message. God, thank you for allowing our pastor, Pastor Johnny, to be back with us today. And that um, I just pray for his um, road to recovery, God. He's got a little bit ways to go, but we're so honored and thankful that he is back with us today. God, just give us an amazing morning of continuing to worship. And we love you so much. In your name I pray. Amen. Y'all may be seated. everybody doing? Yeah, I like that. Who's clapping back here? Come on, let's, let's get this Baptist out of us. Hey, I was inspired for three weeks. My fill-in was kind of dogging that lack of enthusiasm in the churches. I'm going to tap on that for a little bit. It's good to be home. It's good to be home. It's good to be back with you. Uh, I was watching, and I thought, man, I better get back there quick real quick uh, or I'm going to I'm going to uh, sick myself to unemployment and I will draw unemployment trust me believe that I can't I'm not allowed but anyway God is good he's good he's good he's good all the time he's good every time he's always on time he's never late he's never early but right on time and uh, I'm grateful for that this morning. Uh, I have a whole month's worth of a sermon series that I didn't get to do that I get to do this morning. Cowboys don't kick off till next Sunday. <laughs> Sunday night. So I get to do a whole month series today. God is good. God is good. I remember... Uh, uh, we went on a mission trip to Haiti, and uh, the, we, we went to church on that Sunday. Well, it was like 10 days, but we hit the Sunday, so we went to church. Come on in, ladies. Come on in. Come on. <laughs> we'll wait for you. We'll wait for you. No embarrassment. No shame. Anyway, good to see y'all. Good to see y'all. Front row. Look at all these youth in the front here, back over there. Brody, is there something that you don't play? I see you on so many different instruments. I can't even play that egg. <laughs> I don't have enough rhythm. Uh, I took some pills last night for the first time in a few days, right, Ange? Uh, so uh, if I have a little ADD going on, uh, it's not my fault. You can uh, thank the pharmaceuticals for that. Why are you shaking your head? Well, anyway, uh, went on a trip to Haiti. And uh, we went to church, and we drove like for an hour. We got up early, ate breakfast, hit the road, 
And church started at 8, so, man, we had already been up for at least two hours. And so we go to this little village where Pastor Jacques pastors multiple churches in, in Haiti around the Port-au-Prince area. And so we get to the church, and it's really a, a, a tent. Uh, but it was comfortable, a lot of chairs. We were, uh, it, was, it was hot. But uh, we were comfortable, a lot of fans going on. And let me tell you, I kid you not, that church service lasted at least five to six hours. I had sunglasses on, though. I'll just leave it at that. But let me tell you, let me tell you when they do church, they don't mess around. They don't mess around. They do church. And there was kids. There was tons of kids, tons of youth. They were everywhere. And, and man, let me tell you, they did church. Oh, and, and then they told me that I had to speak, and, and they, I would have a translator, and I'm like, uh, a little bit more notice would have been helpful. <laughs> so I basically just talked to the youth, and, I mean, it was, it was crazy. But, man, there was no complaining except for people in our group. Not me, though. I'm too spiritual to complain about how long the service was. I'm, like, beyond spiritual. But anyway... Ain't it crazy that in America, we, we, we concern ourselves with a, uh, we got to beat the Methodist to the, to the restaurant. Church of Christ let out pretty early too. You know, ain't it crazy? But in a place like that, and I've been to Africa too, and it's like that as well. I mean, they don't have a concept of, hey, church starts now, but we got to be done by this. It, there's no concept of that. It just keeps going and going and going. That's what we're doing this morning. Father God, I thank you for your goodness, your grace, your mercy, your love, your forgiveness. I thank you for healing. I thank you that you got doctors and nurses and, and medical professionals, medical experts that know what they're doing, Father, and, and, and your healing power travels through their knowledge and through their hands to fix us. So I thank you for that, Father. I thank you. Father, but always... Always have us acknowledge that you are the great physician. You're the great healer. And, Father, ultimately it's in your hands. It's in your hands. It's about you. It's not about us. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to be in Psalms 100 this morning. I'm going to read the whole chapter. The whole chapter. And the kids are like, Five verses. You ready? Psalms 100. Shout triumphantly to the Lord, all the earth. For you King James people out there, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. I like that. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Man, we already did that this morning, huh? So a lot of people came up this week and did all this. And, and man, they, and, and, and they were excited. I heard kids talking about this yesterday, how excited they were, how things looked. Hey, come look at the snowflakes in the hallway. It was amazing. The joy in that. Acknowledge that Yahweh is God. He made us, and we are his. His people, the sheep of his pastor. pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For Yahweh is good and his love is eternal. His faithfulness endures through all generations. Ain't that good? As Christians living in the United States, I believe all of us qualify there, we have so very much to be grateful for, more than we can possibly imagine. Amen? Way more. I'm reminded of the wealthy Texan. Any wealthy Texans in here this morning? Show of hands. Anyone? Okay, anyway. I'm reminded of this wealthy Texan who had the habit of giving his father unique gifts. Remember that, Jonathan? Unique gifts. Expensive gifts. Every Father's Day. One year, it was hang gliding lessons. I'm not doing that. The year before that was an entire record collection of Slim Whitman hits. I don't even know who that is. Anybody know who Slim Whitman is? 
Oh, I see hands everywhere. I love y'all. And even autographed by the singer himself. But one year, he wanted to outdo himself. He purchased a rare kind of South American bird called the translator. This bird could speak five different languages, and they also trained it to sing the Yellow Rose of Texas in any key while standing on one foot. This talented bird cost $10,000. By the way, if you want to give me a $10,000 gift for Father's Day, please don't give me a bird. But he felt it was worth every penny. This would be the Father's Day gift his dad would never forget. A week after Father's Day, the son called his father and he said, Dad, how did you like the bird? His father responded with, it was delicious. Chicken fried. Oh, how did your Thanksgiving morning go? It, was it great? Was it amazing? This is how mine started. I burnt our fried turkey. And it cost me, literally, uh, Cracker Barrel is good, <laughs> but it cost me dearly. And Angie was not too happy about that. Let's just eat it. Let's eat it. I'm like, I ain't eating that thing. I gave it a little taste test. It was not good. It was, oh, my gosh. But I, I, I just completely lost track of it in the fryer. I know, right? Every time, but I completely lost track. That's how our Thanksgiving started, our Thanksgiving morning. But you know what? It was still amazing, still amazing. Got to spend time with uh, Angie's brother and his family, and it was, it was, it's always fun, always great. Then we saw a victory. Uh, but anyway, that's, that's minor. But I'm glad and I'm thankful that I was able to eat, even though it cost quite a bit this year. An attitude of gratitude. We have so much that at times we can't see the enormous value of all God has done for and given us. W.E. Hindley has a famous poem entitled Invictus. Ever heard of it? Anybody? Anybody like poetry? Robert? Which in Latin means unconquered. You know, people don't realize this about me, but I do read a lot, and I do come across a lot of poetry and uh, uh, sonnets and all that, and I try to find out, figure out the meanings of those poems. I know it's weird. You, I know you don't see that in me, and that's okay. You can, you can, you can have your stereotypes of me all you want, but this is me. I'm very nerdy like that. I watch a lot of documentaries. I, I, it's, it's almost ungodly. But anyway. Invictus in Latin means unconquered. It is meant to be a testimony of the unconquerable human spirit. The imagery of this poem is that a person standing at the gates of hell, unafraid because he is sufficient unto himself. You might be familiar with the final stanza of this poem. Maybe it'll jog a memory. It matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishments the scroll. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. Very, very popular poem. Unfortunately, this summarizes the mindset of this day and age. We have adopted the attitude that I see ourselves as, as ourselves or oneself as the source of strength, Happiness and status. Did you catch that? Even as authentic followers of Jesus, we have been influenced by the idea and live in the ever-present danger that what we are, have what we have, is solely because of what we have done. It's called patting ourselves on the back. Look at the mighty things that I have done. Look at the things I've accomplished. Yeah, Tom Brady has seven Super Bowls. But I promise you, he didn't do it by himself. I promise you, he had five 800-pound linemen protecting him as he threw quarter uh, touchdowns to these enormously fast 
wide receivers, millionaire wide receivers. You're not going to get paid millions of dollars to drop balls. Some of them do. So he had a lot of help. But it's real easy to say, because of me. Somebody used to say, uh, when I used to have uh, parent meetings, and I have quite a few of them as a youth pastor, I don't know if you realize this, but I haven't, I haven't always been this refined, this eloquent. So I would have these parent meetings, and of course my pastor would be present, oh, and they would be pla- blasting me. These parents would be like hounding me. They don't need a team leader. They need a pastor. I hope you're watching, by the way. Yeah, I'm talking about you. They need a pastor. They don't need a friend. What a friend we have in Jesus. I just couldn't help but think that song while I'm getting blasted by these people. And, and they would say things like, the previous youth pastor, he has so many people that he's influenced over the years. Mission field, this and that, and this and that and the other. Little did they know that I knew that that particular youth pastor and his son were constantly fist fighting. I knew that it's not funny, but I'm like, yeah, he did a fine job, basically under his own roof. Just incredible. Of course, I didn't say that. I'm thinking it, but I'm getting blasted. And then, and then uh, why do you think these kids are doing so amazing under the previous youth pastor's regime. I'm like, well, I look at it like this. I said, if I start taking credit for all the wonderful kids in my ministry over the years, then I got to take credit for all the knuckleheads too. Maybe, just maybe, mom and dad had something to do with it. Why is Dan such a fine son? Well, maybe, maybe... Miss Terry had a lot to do with it. Notice how I said Miss Terry. Oh, don't agree with me, Dan. I mean, mom and dad, you have a lot to do with the success of your kids, your encouragement, your challenges. Because if you take credit for all the good kids you got and you don't want to take credit for the one bad apple, come on, come on. So I can't do that. If I'm going to take credit... For the Josh Mullins of the world, i got to take credit for the knuckleheads too. Come on. But that's not how it works. How about we give glory to God? How about we give credit to the God of the universe? Well, anyway, rabbit. The attitude of this poem contradicts scriptural teaching and is inconsistent with a spirit-filled life. Those of us who know Jesus... We've been born again, washed in his blood, been gifted eternal life, should never get into, give in to this attitude. Never. We have been given the free gift of salvation where we did absolutely nothing to earn it. And so from that moment, we recognize that we have so much to be grateful for. We have the gospel of the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the good news and the amazing privilege of sharing it with the rest of the world, our world. Psalm 100 is an admonition from the writer to thank the Lord for who he is and what he has done. We are told how to thank him, when and where to thank him. Verse 1, shout triumphantly to the Lord, all the earth. Again, the KJV, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. I can make a joyful noise, can I? Come on. I love making a joyful noise because that's all it is. But you know what? It's joyful. It's going to be joyful. I ain't going to shut up. I remember when I had COVID, the previous illness that I had, the, the ER doctor or the nurse or somebody said, uh, I was at a 48 oxygen level. Anybody in the medical field in here? I was at a 48 when I walked in. And the doctor says, I'm surprised you're even conscious and talking. I go, that's what I do. That's what keeps me going. I don't need TikTok and Snapchat to talk. Quit being, are you feeling guilty? Come on. Come on, what's up? 
Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. The Hebrew religious ritual demonstrates God, Yahweh, as the source of our joy, a source of their joy. A good Jew regarded the act of thanking God as the ultimate joy of life. Pure joy is the joy in God as both the source and the object. Psalm 1611 says, you reveal the path of life to me. In your presence is abundant joy. In your right hand are eternal pleasures. Ain't that amazing? We are to express our gratitude to the Lord in an attitude and a public manner, making a joyful noise. The word noise. I know you're wondering, what does that mean? Because I think sometimes kids and sometimes adults, they hear only Charlie Brown's parents. Remember that? Hey, Pastor John, are you preaching Sunday? Yes. Good. Because this is what I want to hear. I really believe that. And it's happening today all across this great land of ours. Where was I? Noise. Means to break forth with or to burst. The person making his... This noise is so full of emotion that they're unable to contain themselves. Noise. You ever been to a sporting event? Did y'all watch that game last night? Just saying. Did y'all watch that? I know this shirt don't fit me anymore, but I had to wear it because I was making a joyful noise because I was so filled with emotion that it burst. Often we express a lot of emotions and we burst with all of this noise. The history of the word enthused comes from a Greek word that means to be possessed by God. You ever heard that before? Enthused, to be, I know you have, Miss Terry. If you're a theologian, you've heard all that. To be enthused, to be possessed by God, it almost sounds Hollywoodish. This, this next statement, Pastor Doug, uh, actually encouraged me. Simply because if this is true, then our churches are filled with people that aren't possessed by God. Come hang out with me for a significant period of time. Just come on. Come on. I promise you this. You're going to be entertained. You're going to be enthused, and it's going to be meaningful. I got two former students here with me doing mighty things out there. I take no credit, no credit whatsoever, because they were amazing when I met them. So how do I take credit for how awesome they're doing when they were already amazing when I met them? Hello, mom and dad. I don't know. But they're out doing amazing things. Did we hang out a lot? My goodness. Man, we hung out all the time. Come, come on. And Jacob didn't like me at first. He flat out was like, this dude is so obnoxious. But you give me some time, I'll grow on you. I'll grow like a fungus. It's not funny. Verse 2, serve the Lord with gladness. Ooh. Come before him with joyful songs. Did y'all have fun decorating the other day? Because the kids apparently had fun because they were excited about telling me what they did up here. They were excited. They were like, man, you should see. John, have you seen the church? John, have you seen the, the, the Christmas tree? Did you see the hallway? I'm like, man, I don't like decorating nothing. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Many think that service to God is confined to those in vocational ministry. Woo! But know this, all, A-L-L, all who claim to be followers of Jesus are ministers and servants of the Lord Jesus Christ. God is more concerned with what we are than what we do because what we are will determine what we do. Can I say that again? I didn't make this statement up. I saw it and I had to put it in here. 
God is more concerned with what we are than what we do because what we are will determine what we do. I like saying this, and this is something that I may have heard it. Surely I did, but I've kind of adopted it as one of my sayings. We do what we want to do. We do what we want to do. And if we don't want to do it, we ain't going to do it. We ain't going to do it. Well, I get up every Monday and go to work. I don't want to do that. I'm like, well, that's different. You like to eat. You like a roof over your head, so you do something. 90% of Americans hate their job. Absolutely hate it. Much rather do something else. America. The United States of Great America. 90%. In other words, if you were to win the lottery, somebody said, what if somebody at the church wins the lottery, Johnny? I'm like, well... 10%. Biblical. Biblical. 10%. But I believe, I believe most of us, most Americans, not y'all, y'all are too spiritual. Most Americans would quit their jobs on Monday if they win the lottery on Saturday or whenever they do the drawing. Quit pretending like you don't know my mama. My mama. (laughs) Um, she was a good, godly woman, but man, did she like them scratch-offs. <laughs> she liked them scratch-offs. Oh, I'm like, oh, mom. I said, you're a Pentecostal pastor, ain't gonna appreciate this. But I hope you hit it. Hope you hit it. But she loved them scratch-offs. But anyway, uh, um, great, great woman, great woman, great memory. I'm thankful for her, very much so. So many who claim to be, to have Jesus as their Lord and Savior, live a life void of joy and gladness. It's not my place to question anybody's salvation. But show me a person who claims Jesus yet is lacking joy and gladness. And I'll show you someone who's focused on the wrong thing. Perhaps these people serve out of greed. People like this do what they do for the Lord or the church only for what they can get in return. A person of greed is destined to a life of unhappiness. That's why we see it. Why? Because physical things, earthly possessions, human accomplishments cannot meet spiritual needs. Others serve begrudgingly. Haven't I done enough? Let someone else do it. That's why we have paid staff. This attitude is one that feels like something is owed to them. People like this are blinded to the blessings of God, the fullness of his goodness. We don't realize how undeserving we truly are. John Maxwell said this. I don't know if you ever heard of John Maxwell. He said this. Well, let me read it. The instant we are born, John Maxwell said this, we already owe someone for nine months of room and board. And we never really pay that back. Moms say amen. They keep costing us. Well, moms, they keep costing us. Not just monetarily, but in emotions and prayers and and, in agony. Oh, no. Sometimes, like my son, my Marine, called me last night. I'm like, oh, no, because he rarely calls me. He always calls her, rarely calls me. Hey, Dad, are you watching the game? I'm thankful. I'm thankful that he's alive and well and is enjoying life. I'm thankful. And I don't care if he came, I don't care if he called me and said he needs money. I'd be like, boy, get a job. I got one, Dad. Okay. True story. We can never do enough to say thank you, Lord. Service to the Lord 
It can also be a grind. At times we lose the joy of salvation, of our salvation. Just like many of our marriages, our relationship to our Lord does not have to become a grind, lacking passion and zeal. It only gets there because we allowed it to. I've lost a lot of weight recently. Been doing a lot of working out, watching what I eat. Yep. Been working out. And my wife will say, man, I wish I could lose weight like that. I said, don't worry about it. You don't worry about that. Stop worrying about that. Be thankful that you have health. Be thankful that you're still hot. There's just more of you to love. Come on. I don't let girls talk about their weight. Come on, guys. Don't let your women talk about their weight. That's a lie from the pit of hell. They are beautifully and wonderfully magic, not magically, remarkably created by the hands of perfection, and God makes no mistakes. Ladies, how you look is a blessing from God. All right? How you look is just the way you're supposed to look. So don't let our women, don't let our ladies fall into the trap that they've gained some weight or the mirror is not not as beautiful as it once was. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. You're more beautiful to me today than you were 28 years ago. And I mean that. I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Me, on the other hand, that's another sermon. You want abundant joy? Don't serve out of greed or grudge or grind, but with gladness. We get out of the mindset of what's in it for me, then our journey to joy has begun. If you are just a Sunday morning Christian, then you're missing it. Ouch. Oh, you are. What if you only ate once a week? Think about that for a minute. What if you ate once a week? I'm talking physical food. Well, if this is the only food you get, I feel sorry for you. Somebody says, we're not getting nothing out of the Sunday morning messages, Johnny. I'm like, okay, then then your Monday through Saturday is messed up too. (laughs) Because that's where you're supposed to get it. That's what some people used to say, Johnny, you need to preach on this because my kids are heathens. They're not making good choices. They're all messed up. Their friends are sorry. They're sorry. Their teachers are sorry. Their coaches are sorry. Everything's sorry about them. You need to preach on that. I go, you want me to undo in 30 minutes 15 years of your training? That's what you want me to do? Good night. Who am I, Houdini? No, it doesn't work that way. Church isn't about us. I know that sounds weird, and people are going to email me about that comment. It's not about us. It's about him. We're here to praise and worship him. If you don't get anything out of the message, you didn't come to eat. Because if you're not eating on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and Saturday, that's why you're spiritually anorexic on Sunday. And you're going to keep looking, keep looking. I can go into any church in America and find falls, flaws, any of them. I don't care if they're running 8 million or 5. I'm going to find flaws. You can hang out with me for about 10 seconds and find a lot of them. Trust me, I've heard some of those things. And people talk. People talk. That's a flaw. (laughs) They talk. I talk. I respond, though. Moving on. Verse 3. Acknowledge that Yahweh is good. He made us, and we are his, his people, the sheep of his pasture. He made us, and we are his. No one else deserves our service like he does. Before our careers, before our spouses, ouch. Not my wife. Not my husband. Yes, before our children. Ooh, another ouch. I believe some of parents worship their kids. I've seen it for years and years and years. 
I see it on their Facebook. My kid made the A honor roll for their 18th straight team. <laughs> I remember back in the day with bumper stickers. I told my mom one time, can I, have a, can I get a bumper sticker and put it on our car? She goes, first of all, we don't have a car. And no, I don't want stickers everywhere. I'm like, but it's you saying that you're proud of me. I'm proud of you. <laughs> I, I pick on my mom a lot, but uh, I shouldn't. But it was, it was like, it was like, no, we're not doing that. <laughs> no offense to those of you that do, but sometimes I think we worship our kids. My mama didn't worship her kids. She loved us, but she certainly didn't worship us. Before our own desires, if we don't get this one right, then it all crumbles after that. I like a line from the movie Rudy, one of my favorite sports movies. Rudy, Rudy, y'all seen that? Rudy. It's where the priest tells Rudy, you know, Rudy is trying to, trying to get enrolled at Notre Dame. Why on earth would anybody want to do that? Beyond me. But anyway, trying to get enrolled. Y'all seen the movie? True story. I've met the real Rudy. Pretty cool. He's about this tall and literally. But anyway, he's, he was praying and praying and praying, trying to get into, trying to get into Notre Dame. Just getting in and then to get on the football team. So he comes to this scene where he's in some kind of chapel and the priest walks by and he notices Rudy there and he says, Rudy, what's up? He goes, am I not praying enough? He goes, yeah, yeah, you're praying enough. And this is what the priest responds with. He says, in all my years of ministerial service, I've come to the conclusion there are two irrefutable truths. There's more, but he was making a point. There are two irrefutable truths. There is a God, and I'm not him. <laughs> oh, man, and as you get older, these things just start becoming more simple. We were bought with a price. Yahweh is good. When we sold out to sin, he bought us back with the blood of his own son, Jesus. We are his, the sheep of his pasture. As sheep, he leads us. He provides for us. He guides us. He comforts us. He protects us. He alone is the source of our blessings, not ourselves. We have to, we have to acknowledge that. Verse 4, into, into his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. The Israelites could only experience the presence of God through the Ark of the Covenant back in the day because that's where God resided. Oh, but all that changed 2,000 years ago with Jesus. Jesus now resides in all of us who place their trust in him for forgiveness and for salvation. For us, we are in a constant state of his presence. Can I say that again? For us believers, followers of Jesus Christ, he is in a constant, we are in a constant state of his presence. We are unable to escape his presence. Very poetic in Psalms 139. Where can I go? <laughs> Can't go anywhere. So our attitude should always be of gratitude and of praise because we are always in his presence. We are to be thankful and bless his name, the name above all names. When Scripture tells us that bless the Lord, His Word is telling us to profess, to acknowledge, to recognize, to confess with our words and deeds that God alone is the source of our all true joy and our blessings in life. When we do this and mean it, because some of us make a joyful noise every Sunday when we sing to Him, but we don't have a clue what we're saying. We don't have a clue what we're saying. We're going through the motions. We have no choice but to give thanks. It is impossible to be in a right relationship with God and be void of an attitude of gratitude. Gratitude practiced or displayed is the evidence of proper understanding of who God is. And I believe we miss it. And this is a different service or a different message. But if we don't know who God is, then we're, we're also missing it. Who he truly is. Verse 5. For Yahweh is good, and his love is eternal. 
His faithfulness endures to all generations. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Very, very popular passage of Scripture. And one of the passages where you get the term, God is good. God is good. I don't believe when bad things happen, God is punishing us. He can, because he's the boss, and he does what he wants. Was God punishing John the Baptist by having him beheaded because of disobedience? Was Daniel disobedient and suffer a possible gruesome death in the den of lions? At times, we suffer consequences as a result of our disobedience. But this doesn't necessarily mean punishment. This just means we're dumb. What's another modern way to say dumb? Stupid? What else? Anything? Got anything? What? I'm just trying to interact here, try to, before kickoff. Dumb. So whenever a kid does a dumb thing, y'all just say, oh, that was dumb? Is that what y'all say? Cringy? Do y'all say cringy? Okay. Dumb. Sometimes we suffer consequences, not because God is punishing us, but because we dumb. How come I ain't got no money in the bank? Well, because you spent it, dummy. How come I don't have enough money for my electric bill? But I go out to eat every day. Well, because you're dumb. It's real easy. Oh, struck a nerve there. Struck my own nerve. What I do believe, that we, when we are enduring some troubling times, we turn to him for peace. And when we do, and he sends us peace that surpasses all understandings, we begin to count our blessings. And let me tell you, I've been counting a whole lot lately. A whole lot. Counting them. I've lost track. I've lost track. Oh, it could be a lot worse. I could be stage four. <laughs> so what? I'm starting chemo in a couple of weeks. I don't care. I'm counting my blessings. It could be worse. My surgeon... He told me if I'd have waited another 24 to 48 hours, I wouldn't be here today. And some of you are like, that's not good. Count your blessings. Count your blessings. Count your blessings. Oh, I've been counting. I've been counting a whole lot. And then I start thinking about other people. I start thinking about your friend who's having to endure her first holiday without her partner. It's not easy. So you count your blessings. You start, you start realizing, okay, I'm going to be here for Thanksgiving. I'm going to be here for Christmas. I'm going to be here for the 4th of July. I'm going to be here. Some people can't say that. So we count our blessings. We count our blessings. That's what I started doing. What else can you do when you're recovering? You can't even move. We start looking at the glass half full, huh, Doug? I appreciated that transparency. He's a glass empty kind of guy, half empty. And then he said his wife is a half full. I like that. I like when we're transparent. I like when we're vulnerable. I like it when we say, hey, man, I'm messed up right here, here, and here, and here. I like it. We become vulnerable. Because you know why? We, we start counting our blessings. You name them one by one. Y'all remember that? Count your many blessings, see what God has done. Am I in the right key, Robert? I didn't ask over here. I asked over there. We begin to thank him for the things that we have and focus less on what we don't have. <laughs> Can I say that again? When we truly have an attitude of gratitude, we start thanking him for the things that we have, like our health. I'm glad I could stand before you right now Less than four weeks from my outpatient surgery. I know it was an outpatient, but I just had to minimize it a little bit. I had major surgery. I had somebody punch me earlier right here. 
I'll tell you all in a minute who it is. I hope he's grounded for a year. He didn't know, but you know what? It's my fault. You know why? Because that's how I carry myself with some of these kids. And I deserve that right here. I'm on pain meds. I'm good. Don't do it? Okay, it's on this side anyway. (laughs) We begin to thank him for the things we have and focus less on what we don't have. We got a lot. We got a lot right here in this little bitty church in this big time Ferris, Texas. We got so much. I know churches that are many times bigger than us. More people, more servants, more believers in Jesus, and we got more money in the bank than they do, yet we broke. Count your many blessings. I'm glad we got a little bit in there. Count your many blessings. See what God has done. I know today, and I wasn't going to do this, but I'm more thankful for my wife. And I acknowledge how often I take for granted the blessing that she is. Who continuously cares for me when I am utterly incapable of doing the simplest thing. So let's find you a good wife. We'll do that for you. Clean up after you. For free. And then I have to deal with the attitude that goes with it. I have to deal with the prima donna personality. And do it. Do it with gladness. Kind of. I'm thankful for a daughter. Who will do whatever is necessary to care for her father. so undeserving. Oh, but she, she's cleaned up too. She doesn't complain. Dad, what do you want for breakfast? You got it. You want some pancakes? Yes. Bacon? Yes. Toast? Yes. Pineapple, banana, orange juice? Yes. I'm thankful for my two sons who are far more loving and caring than I ever was at their age. (laughs) Calling me and checking up on me. and Even though they're both far away, well, one of them's here. I know they'd be here in a split second to be there for their father. I'm thankful for my church family. More than you know. The food. text messages, phone calls, the hospital visits means a lot. And friends. Man, I got a lot of friends. I'm not going to lie. I'm not trying to brag, but I got a lot of friends. And man, they, I've, there were some guys I hadn't heard from in literally years. Hey man, you all right? I'm going to say like Travis Creech. People dog him a lot. He's this, he's that, he's everything. Man, he's checking on me. You all right, man? You need anything? I'm like, yeah, well, you didn't borrow one of your credit cards. Let's start there. Good friend Jeff Gilbert, Steve Stone, come in to see me the day that I got released from the hospital. Even brought me some lunch, way too much food. Especially in those days when I was still just slurping on some jello. Truly grateful and I'm thankful. More today than I was a month ago. Count your blessings. Name them one by one. How about you? How about you? And this is where it gets tough. Here's your application. Does your life presently demonstrate an attitude of gratitude? Is there joy in your life? Is there a bounce to your step? Is it always gloom and doom? 
Are you living in a constant state of being anxious and depressed? Let's figure it out. Let's figure it out together. Share it with somebody. Share it with a good friend. I can't get this out of my mind. I can't stop thinking about it. I can't. I, I pray about it, but something's just, it's just okay. Let, let, let's, let's deal with it together as a family. Let's deal with it. Let's talk about it. Let's walk, let's walk together. We had some friends over on Wednesday. They were all here one Sunday where the son committed suicide. You may recall me uh, talking about that. And, and, and how they just, such an encouragement, how they carry on. I believe this is the first holiday without, without him. Has to be. This happened in the spring. And I'm and I'm I'm like, man, unbelievable joy. And he was one of the ones that kept checking on me. Hey, are you all right, man? You good? You need anything? You need to come mow your lawn. Whatever, whatever, man. There's joy in your life. As a church, we should never waver from our service to God and to others. Our acts of service to the God of the universe and to others is best demonstrated with our attitude of gratitude. This is why we never should stop doing what we're doing, and then some. Until the last penny, we should continue to serve this community, serve that community, pass out food, pass out sandwiches, pass out turkeys, pass out Thanksgiving baskets. We should never, ever waver or stop doing those things for others. Never. It's easy to do it for ourselves. It's easy to do it for our family. Oh, but when we do it for others, that's an attitude of gratitude. God, we're paying it forward. God, you did it for me. I'm going to do it for somebody else. I close with this story. We were down and out. One Christmas season, kids were little. Man, we were so broke, we, we needed a co-signer to pay cash. We were broke, living in a single wide, half a single wide, holes in the floor. Man, we were, we were poor. I mean, poor people were feeling sorry for us. I mean, it was horrible. You couldn't tell, though. Because I still had a bounce in my step back then. I was still yapping, Robert. I was still like, <laughs> I was still me, man. You know why? Because money in the bank doesn't dictate who I am as a person. The lack thereof, it does not. It does not. That check brings little joy to me. Abundant joy. Well, anyway, we're down and out. We're just... Well, man, we're just like, well, anyway, uh, I never worried about the kids because of their grandparents. They always, Angie's parents would always load them up, stuff they don't need. You know how it is. They just load them up, all this crazy stuff. Well, anyway, we come back. I got a, I got a night job at Walmart to supplement some income. Big old nine bucks an hour. Big money, big money. Woo! And uh, Brooke, Brooke was little. Kids were even littler. But Brooke would tell people, my daddy works at Walmart. And she'd be like excited. I'm like, hey, yo. Mm -mm. What, dad? I'm like, let's be private about that. <laughs> but she'd be like, my dad works at Walmart. I would work nights. I stocked the TVs. And those TVs were like, no flat screen. Things were like, even the, the 20 inches were like. Well, anyway, uh, I got Christmas Eve off, and I had to be back to work the night of Christmas. So we went down to Austin area, did our Christmas, had to come back. I had to work that night. Well, when we walked into our living room, bam! Living room. Remember that, Angie? I know you don't. Living room was full of stuff. I'm talking... Mavs tickets, cash 
to spin at the Mavs and a note that said spend only at the Mavs game. A couple hundred dollars plus some awesome tickets, seats for me and Angie. All kinds of crazy stuff. Just TVs. I'm talking, I'm like, man. And I'm like, oh gosh. So I, told, I said, man, whoever did this, we didn't need any of that. And they said, it's not about what you need, man. I said, my kids are taken care of. It's not about what you need. Don't be robbing them of a blessing. Fast forward, next Christmas, things are way better. Things are way better. And I'm way happier because there's money in the bank. It brings so much joy to have all this money in the bank. Because wealthy people, that's how they live. They're just so happy. Well, we did the same thing. Had a few more days off because things were different. But we would walk into our house from wherever we were. Bam, they did it again. Living room full of stuff for the kids. And finally, I told the guys at the church on staff, y'all need to chill. I said, whoever's doing this, y'all need to stop. I said, there's other needier people out there. Hey, but they want to bless you. They want to bless you and your family. I said, from that moment on, I said, if you want to bless me, knock yourself out. Because I don't want to rob them of a blessing. That same individual, I found out years later who it was on our way to a, a Mavs game in his Hummer. I think I've shared this before because I repeat stories. He says to me, he says, we're talking. Most of the time, 98% of the time, we're joking, banter, back and forth. People just like arguing with me. I don't know why. Well, in this particular segment, I don't know if we're on our way or on our way back from the Mavs game. And he says, dude, I would do anything to trade lives with you. And my instant fleshly thought was, let's start with our bank account first. I'll give you my bank account, you give me yours. That's a, that's a good trade-off. But then I thought, man, this dude's got everything. This dude has everything you could possibly want. Houses, businesses, no telling how much money in the bank. He's the one that was blessing us for those two Christmases. And I thought, he wants to switch places with me. I thought, wow, I guess money doesn't buy you joy. Money and things and possessions don't buy you anything. If anything, it buys you heartache and greed. Count your many blessings. See what God has done. Our acts of service to the God of the universe and to others is best demonstrated with our attitude of gratitude. I believe that man and his family is blessed because of his philanthropy. Because of what he does. Somebody says, well, he's giving out of his abundance. We don't know how much he's giving out of his abundance. I know this. I know this. A lot of his money is going to rescuing girls out of sex slavery in Africa and in Asia and right here in the good old U.S. of A. Yeah. Yeah, it's a thing. Okay. I don't know how much of his abundance he's doing it. But I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you something. It's hard to sign that big check, ain't it? Come on, let's be real. It's hard to sign that big check. Difficult. So I'm not going to dog that. I'm not going to dog that at all. All I know, all I know is that he has an attitude of gratitude that I want and that I strive for. Pray with me. Father God, I thank you for your goodness, your grace, your mercy. Help us never, Father, never to waver from serving you and others. Father, our attitude of gratitude is going to stem, it's going to flow from how we do for others, how we do for you, expecting nothing in return. Help us to be grateful, Father. Focusing on the things we have instead of not, uh, instead of focusing on the things we don't have. Father, what a way to live. It's never enough. Never enough because you need to be enough. 
Help us to focus on that, Father. In this season, in this season of Thanksgiving, ushering in the season of Advent, the season of the coming birth of your Messiah, commemorating, celebrating this. Help us to focus more on what we can give others instead of what to expect from others. What a concept.